You're such an asshole. Oh, tired Cappy in the sea. All right. Uh, this guy has been waiting patiently for 10 days. And it was a, a lengthier, more thought I once. I had to take some notes and because it wasn't just like, ah, I major in engineering and join the military, which would answer most of your questions. <laughs> but anyway, a man writes, I hear a lot of men in the master talk about how if we want, went back to a traditional society and fixed divorce and family courts, everything would be okay. However, I disagree. Technology has already replaced women. Cooking and cleaning is easy with modern appliances. I wouldn't say it replaced them. It 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 obsoleted their traditional housekeeping role. Um, it doesn't take as much. I mean, although I guess if you're only using women to cook and clean for you, yes, they've been replaced in that regard because now a man, I mean, men could always cook and clean for themselves. Um, it, it, despite what you ladies believe, men before they met you, you remember his bachelor pad you want to come to all the time? You were all excited about that? Yeah, it, did it seem like it needed a woman's touch? Was it okay? Was it was it chaos? Was it on fire? Oh, it, it was fine. He, he may have even owned property before you, and somehow he lived to the age of 32 to talk about it, huh? Without you, oh my God. Um, But yes, neither nor, no man nor woman needs each other to support a house of one. You can do all your laundry and your cleaning and all that. Now, in the olden days of the you know division of labor, guy go off to work, make the bacon. <clears throat> Lays would keep a home, and homekeeping was a was a I would say a full time job, but it was it was certainly a part time job. I mean, yeah, the kids, I mean, you're, that's full time job. But these uh, modern day conveniences have, have made things a lot easier. So it's freed up. I would say replaced, but it's freed up uh, people from their normal daily chores. Cooking and cleaning is easy, easy with modern appliances. You can work from home and have your children receive remote education. And sex tech is starting to surpass the real thing. No, I disagree. No. <clears throat> I know all you Manosphere guys and well, all you Manosphere guys. You all want the robot, the sex robots. You all, and look, hey, you make it real. Yeah. All right. Give me a step for the housewife. Hey, babe, do this. Thank you. Uh, Yeah. Uh, every guy's lying if they wouldn't say they wouldn't want that advanced technology where you uh, <clears throat> could not discern whether it was a human or a robot. Um, yeah, that that would be, you know, every guy would pretty much want that. Uh, but it's it's not starting to surpass the real thing. It is supplanting the real thing. Uh, and by sex tech, I don't mean sex robots. I mean uh, porn. Uh, porn is now starting to supplant because it's easier. The, the time investment cost to get porn Compared to actually get just forget forget sex from a girl to get a date from a girl, um, is, is a fraction. Uh, and if you guys are interested, watch my uh, interview with Myron Gaines, uh, where we talked about like the frontier of dating, where uh, it's no longer the twenty percent of men capturing eighty percent of women. It's now like fifteen to ten percent of men <clears throat> capturing ninety percent of the women. Now, now, admittedly, Myron was in Miami, where it's all hot and bothered. But he's saying, like, yeah, if there's a hot girl, you can assume she's sponsored or she has a sugar daddy. Um, so it's not just like, oh, porn is easier. It's been much more difficult to get women for the average guy. And if you're a good-looking guy, it's different. <clears throat> but your average Joe 5, uh, it's much easier just to go for porn. Uh, and it's a lot harder to get girls than it was just a mere 10, 20 years ago. Uh Sex has not surpassed the real thing, or sex tech has not surpassed the real thing. It's replaced it because the cost to get sex is just too dang high. Uh, or affection or dating or romance, whatever you want to call it. Uh, especially if she all she's giving you is the lazy starfish. Now, this is true too, but I'm sure there's million. No, I'm not sure. There are tens of millions of husbands and men out there where the wives have gotten fat and they don't do it. They don't stay in shape and Vegas, be whatever else. Uh, yeah, they're, they're sweet. They're going to porn too. Oh, what was it? Rolo telling me, not me, but he was talking about how something like 60% of Christian men have porn addictions and well, okay, define porn addiction, but yeah, it doesn't surprise. Oh, are we gonna, are we gonna wear that long dress again, sweetheart? Huh? Even though we're not Mennonites, we're gonna wear the Mennonite dress again, huh? Oh yay! We well, gotta get a new Mennonite dress because he got fat. Oh, but yeah, okay, Vegas beautiful. I wonder if they'll go to porn. 
So it's not replacing women. It's just a lot easier than women. It's like, boy, I'd really like a grapefruit, but they don't have grapefruit. I guess we'll go with oranges. <clears throat> the remaining benefits exclusively received from women are eggs and the ego boost of being popular with the girls. That sadly, a con a condemning as that statement is, is increasingly becoming true. Um, the benefit, if you really wanted to have children, it would be the eggs. Uh, I'm sure there are many divorced fathers out there that would say, yeah, just get a surrogate. I'm sure there are many divorced fathers uh, that would recommend that. Um, and, and I was looking at the numbers. Yeah, half, half of the guys do get divorced. Half. <laughs> this isn't some weirdo extreme sect of men who hate women. It's divorced men, which is half. <laughs> half. And they, yeah, surrogate, yeah, vasectomy, yeah. This isn't, this isn't avant-garde. It's pretty mainstream now. And the ego boost of being popular with the girls, um, and even uh, neither of which require relationship thanks to surrogates. Okay. Uh, I think even that's being eroded away. I think a lot of guys are uh, in part disincentivized with the increasingly ugly women out there. And you guys are no, no prizes, beauty queens yourselves. Everyone's getting uglier and fatter. But <clears throat> from the men's perspective, there's not that many good looking gals. And what good looking gals are, are, are increasingly um, uh, picky, finicky. Uh, that you forget even being popular. Oh, look, I got a girl. I remember there was a day, there was a time, like I'd walk in with a bombshell on my arm and be like, dang, how's that short guy doing? Well, the trick is failure and asking out lots of girls and failing and failing and failing and then being charismatic and ballroom day. And then one or two, you'll get past the goalie. They don't stick around. I mean, they want a tall guy, but they're, 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 they're curious they're entertained. You are they, they okay? All right, tell me more. Your first sales pitch went. You get a date or two, but that, that's all it ever went. <clears throat> You're really fun, and I really like you. It's just what? Well, I don't know if I'm ready. Just say I'm short. Just say you don't like short. I got it. I got it. It was fun. It was that the, the two nights away. Hey, hey, we had. I know it was fun. It was fun for me too. But you know, you got to do your thing. Bye. Uh, neither which require a relationship. Thanks to him. Even if we fix society, <clears throat> I think relationships as we think of them are dead. Yes. Uh, quote unquote fix. This isn't like you throw a switch. Uh, you'd have to start from scratch with a new generation. This is why I had that hope with the uh, Gen Zers, not necessarily for uh, Gen Z women or men to come traditional again. <clears throat> More so they major in stupid crap. Um, so I wrote the book, How Not to Become a Millennial. I'm like, look, guys, we... We did this big experiment on the millennials, okay? We tested everything. And uh, everything the social scientists and the socialists and the liberal arts people said was wrong, completely wrong. Please, whatever you do, don't major in stupid. Oh, you are majoring in stupid stuff. Never mind. We'll just have to wait till the next generation comes along. Uh, undoing what half a, a century of feminism has done, divorce, law, that's going to take at least a generation. Uh, so your boomers are wiped out, your Xers are wiped out, your millennials are definitely wiped out. Uh, the Zers, I think, are on track to get wiped out. <clears throat> Whatever next is coming, I don't know. Um, there would have to be a big societal shift caused by what I don't know. We're like, well, we got to get back to basics. Oh, we, we we forgot the wisdom of our elders. And oh, yeah, right. Yeah, you could argue the red pill community is out there. Uh it's there for people who search it and men, a lot of men, increasing number of men are searching it, but this is a, this is a team effort. The women then also have to, through whatever <clears throat> thought process, come to the same conclusion like, oh, wow. Yeah, no, I really do want to be a stay at home wife and raise kids. The, the traditionalism was the best. I, the nuclear family was good for X, Y, and Z and is in my best long-term interest until both parties come to that conclusion. There's no fix. There's such an amazing amount of infrastructure and misinformation and propaganda and lies, frankly. And people are so invested on, they're so old, they're set in their ways. And then you also have the psychology of uh, buyer's remorse. They'll just double down. You got to throw all the, I'm not kidding. You have to throw the Zers, the millennials, the Xers, and the boomers all away. Hoist them up on a petard like I did here. Hopefully, you know that this here, this is the millennials up on a petard. Right? You want to be really successful in life? Read this book. It tells you everything not to do. 
But until we say, look, gaze upon the failure of the millennials, uh, among other generations, <clears throat> and, and do not what they did, uh, you are not repairing male-female relationships today, tomorrow, in the next 10 years. It just isn't going to happen. Um, <clears throat> there's not even an inkling or a desire on uh, most women, not all women, of course, but team woman as a group has been thoroughly inculcated in, into believing the government is their number one thing. The politics is no, it's, it's just not going to happen. It's going to be decades, decades, at least generations. Um, uh, so yeah, relationships, um, traditionally are dead. Technology is already mostly invalidated women. It's in the government has invalidated men. I, <clears throat> they, they, women don't need men. They could clean a house and go out and make money. They don't need you either. I'm not even talking about collecting a government check. Women don't need you. They do make their own money. Some of them do go and major in the right thing. Not enough of them, but some do. And it won't be long until it finishes the job. Dude, that is a pipe dream of you, Manister MGTOW types. It's not happening today or tomorrow. That also is generations in the past where we have Stepford Housewives. The Manosphere's belief that changing the system will somehow fix intersexual dynamics is naive. I agree. Thanks to feminism, the demand for suitable women exceeds the supply. Uh, and the market has already come up with too many better alternatives. Yes, alternatives are substitutions, not, not replacements. I'm sure baser instincts will lead to some interactions between the sexes, but the age of commitment is over. Am I full of shit? How much for you to critique my opinion in a short video? And I said, it's not going to be that short. Because this wasn't that, it's not easy of a question. So, all right. I, in general, agree with your overall opinion that merely changing divorce law or divorce courts or family law is going to, oh, there it is. I forgot to carry the one. Oh, I just, I just didn't add enough boron to the chemical compound. Now, poof, nuclear families again. It's just not going to happen. And the reason why <clears throat> is there's so, three main fundamental changes within society, some of which you've touched on or explained, but I'm, I'm going to go over again. You have technology. You have the government supplanting men as a role of provider. And then women's spiritual agency, religious world has been replaced with careers in feminism and politics as opposed to family, <clears throat> children, man, love, whatever else have you. So let's go through these a little bit. I'm losing my voice again. All right. Um, there we are. Okay, yes. The With cleaning and housekeeping, that's been replaced. Also, I would say auto mechanics, carpentry, that's been replaced not by the skill required, but nowadays we have the money or at least now millennial boys borrow the money to pay some other real man, some tradie to do it. Uh, and this is, you, know, you no longer in a financial sense, uh, and I should be in a labor sense. There we go. A labor sense need someone to maintain the home. Okay. Now should I have someone to raise the kids. Well, let's just not complicate things, but yeah, as we've gotten richer and technology has advanced at da, 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 da. Uh, you, there's not this exchange that, that this transaction that normally occurred where men went out and worked and killed the saber tooth tigers. Women took care of the home. So there's a little bit of extra free time. <clears throat> We've also come up to the point now, uh, where technology has re substituted, not replaced, provided cheaper and, and, and so cheap, preferable alternatives to each other. Uh, women who are not they don't want sex that much. They got by on their sex toys. And they also, as we have, this is a technology related, this is culturally related, where the the stigma of playing the field and, and uh, sleeping around with a lot of guys, that's gone away. So between their toys, <clears throat> their, uh, well, their careers as well, but then also don't forget that one guy could keep 10 women satisfied on a rotation. Um, Women also don't need men. No. So technology has supplanted women uh, in terms of sex where guys will just jerk off to porn. Women 
more, I mean, sex toys have always been around, but now that there is no stigma associated, now it's not technology, but they can go and get a guy at a bar or a nightclub. They have their sexual uh, itch scratch. So men and women don't really need to fall in love or be physically, physically really attracted to one. And I'd also say, even though not technology related, a lot of guys, nearly every guy today has seen a loved one get divorced. Maybe he himself has gotten divorced. So all these alpha guys, you know, they're getting all the ton of play. And, and of course the alpha widow phenomenon where it's like, Oh, I'm just going to keep dating. Why would I commit to any one of these girls? But they keep those girls off the market. So then that's another drive. So the, the men's men being pushed away has been driven by technology and porn. <clears throat> Women are more sociologically driven away. Uh, because plenty of guys will sleep with them. And then, and then we could say technology with sex toys, but that's neither here. And then even if you're worried up about your genetic lineage being carried on, uh, even that's been replaced. You can have surrogacy. So men can find a surrogate woman to have their child. <clears throat> that's usually not the case. Women will do in vitro fertilization. Egg freezing, that's growing uh, exponentially. Everything's growing exponentially. Things rarely grow linearly. But... Um, that's another thing where technology has, you don't need a husband. You don't need a wife. You don't need a father. You don't need a mother. You need egg and sperm. So that technology, which covers procreation, which is a huge reason men and women, one would say the only reason men and women came together, uh, that <clears throat> has further pushed people away. Uh, economics throwing in with the technology, women get in their careers, they, they uh, get education. I'm not against it. Uh, but it is to the point, we'll get this to number three, where they will go beyond what nature has allowed them to. And now they are even resorting more and more to technology to extend their ability to have children well beyond when their body could, uh, through natural means. Uh, so there is no, and let's be honest, men and women came together because the world forced them to religion necessity, safety. It was transactional. Well, with less and less reason, or less and less forces forcing them together, you know, like, oh, we better form a family unit to raise children. With less of those forces there, be it religion, uh, social stigma for being a single parent, <clears throat> the ability to work, technology, freeing up more labor, more resource, uh, not resource, producing more wealth with the same amount of resources. Uh, we don't need to work tech financially to make it happen that we need to have everyone under one household. It, it doesn't have to be that way. So that's driving people further away. That generally falls all under technology, but one could say capitalism, free markets, tech, uh, advances. I would also say traditional roles being obsoleted by these trends in society, but predominantly technology and economics. I would say that. All right. Two, not capitalism. The opposite is the government has completely replaced men as the primary provider for women. Yes, women would like to find a man. Yes, women still want rich men, but hey, it's not prostitution. It's just you want a stable guy. I get it. It really helps if he makes a lot of money. Uh, but there is no, you're never going to be poor. You're never going to be like, oh, dang, I'll be out on my ass if I don't keep my man happy. Right now, that's I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong, but it was a huge force. Poverty was a huge force keeping men and women together. And it also forced them to be mature about it. And whatever differences they had, they had to sell it because the kids would be. It. And so divorce did happen, but it was incredibly rare. <clears throat> now, of course, there was, I'll admit this, there was probably spousal abuse as well on both sides. But now the government has come in. We've implemented basically a socialist light policy of a welfare state. Where kids are taken care of, no one's starving, women don't need men, and so that's just yet another force not forcing men and women together, and one less thing women need men for. So now women really just like, well, what do I want a man for? I don't need him. You don't need him. So you should want him. There's an idealism of like, oh, I, I get to marry the man I want, not the one I have to. I'd be truly in love. I'm like, oh, that must be why divorce rates are the same. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Uh, but here it is. There's a government check. The men were classically the provider, protector, and provisioner, the three P's, the three R's always say. No more. Women don't need you. And and now it it provides a perverse incentive for uh, as they say, alpha no, alpha fucks, beta bucks. They can get a hot guy 
to impregnate them. If you want to go, not all, but some gals like, oh, I really want y'all. You know, the NBA, hello, anybody? Uh, they get you know impregnated by some super alpha, some awesome physical specimen. I've had more than one lady tell me, yeah, they just they just really want that seat. They really want that. Oh my god! And they're like, not to go into too much detail. Oh my god. I guarantee you she's coming her pet just thinking out and no guy will ever replace him. She just wanted to die, die. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. <clears throat> and then we it it's not a theory, uh, though it's not every woman either, but women are acutely aware, and some not all, some act on the alpha fucks beta bucks principle. They will get that alpha man <sighs> married to him or not, doesn't matter. They got the government. Or child support, uh, which comes in the form of the uh, divorce courts. I, I guess what what is that fault? Family court, I guess, because that presumes you were married. So I, I guess divorce court is a a misnomer now. Is it a obsolete uh, phrase? <clears throat> um. So the uh, the government just you don't you don't need a guy. You really don't. You don't need a man to raise children. So that's another further thing separating the sexes. And then I would say, well, let's just call it the soul uh, of women or the soul of the spirit of love. Uh, and that is where, you know, women in the olden days, oh, I can't wait to find a man. Oh, boy, it's about finding a man and get it in a family. Hell. Well, that has been replaced as well. Largely with feminism, it's the new religion, uh, or one could say it's the... It's the installation software that then programs women to find alternative religions or agency or purpose in life or religion or spiritual soul-like meaning. Uh, but they've generally fallen into careerism and politics uh, and, and education, but I assume that goes with career. <clears throat> and some do actually just, you know, feminism. Oh, feminism. It's, 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 feminism unto itself can be the point and purpose in their life and not a husband or children. Now, I've said it a billion times before, and I'll say it a billion and one times. Most women today, talking about how many generations it's going to take to undo this, most women want to have children, and they want to have a husband. That's what the polls indicate. I see very few women wanting to be mothers and wives. <clears throat> and so this is, well, it's not a shock. Divorce rates haven't gone down. We're still at a 50% rate. Kids are skill, still getting dropped off and switched off and passed on possession. I've seen, I always witness it in my apartment building or the gas station or the Walmart where you could see the kids aren't happy. They're kind of like little days, no one's smiling. There's two cars, the the wife and, well, no, not the wife. The man and woman are not happy. The kids are switched off. Uh, well, you you got your day. Our day, our day. It's my day. It's my wedding day. It's our day. And she got her kids. What, you didn't want to keep the husband? And I'm sorry, if you are divorced, you are both miserable parents. <laughs> okay, I should say you're miserable. You failed. You failed. You failed to pick the right person. Can I say that? I know sometimes you, you didn't know, but uh, your kids are fucked growing up in a broken home. You just fucked. But a lot of that is because the focus is no longer family. It's career. It's politics. It's, and by politics, I mean, again, feminism is merely the installation software. You, you could get whatever you want. You want to be an environmentalist? Yeah. You want to be a vegan? Go. Do you want to, whatever, whatever people do, whatever ism or is you pick. Um, but the focus no longer is the family unit. The focus is now the individual. And women have taken, made that very clear that they prefer when you drop your kids off at daycare or you file papers for divorce, it is very clear you love yourself more than your children. I don't want to hear any other excuses unless like the husband was about to beat up the kids and there was an actual physical threat. I don't want and, and sometimes it happens. But for the most part, you just love yourself more than your kids. I've only seen one couple actually put their fucking kids first where you say, all right, we don't want to be together no more, but we're going to stay together until all the kids are out of the house. And they did. And God bless them. And then they got divorced afterwards. I thought that was, that's, that's brilliant by today's standards. That's very selfish and that's true parenting, but that should have, that should be normal. But I know. Most parents, and I do mean this, most parents love themselves more than they do their kids. <clears throat> and so this 
propaganda, for lack of a better word, uh, has supplanted men, just like the government has supplanted men's finances with a government check. Feminism has supplanted the soul or love or purpose or agency, meaning in life, reason for women to get together with men, with themselves, their careers, their politics, their self-originating things and stuff, which I don't know about you, but working was very boring and commuting was very boring and getting going to college was very, but hey, hey, you're all going to be Sheryl Sandberg someday. Um, so those, and so it, it, your general premise, yes, I would agree that you could fix the divorce courts. It's still not going to change these huge, momentous, uh, monumental, that's what I was, monumental, uh, I'd say now thoroughly entrenched, dried and sealed, uh, structural changes to society that are not going away. I mean, just let's think about what would have to, you'd have to have 50 years of counter feminism being disseminated and equally propagandized and indoctrinated in the children for 50 years. Okay. So that, and from K through college, that's not going to happen. <clears throat> the government, the welfare state would have to go away. That's not going to happen. Um, <clears throat> and then technology would have to be stopped. I don't know how you stop technology. I don't know how you stop, you know, VR porn from coming around. I don't know how you stop super vibrators for women for being made. Uh, none of, none of this is going away until there is a critical and massive economic collapse where you don't have technology anymore. You don't have a government that can afford a welfare state. And this, <clears throat> I guess women could still do the careers and femi you, know, you can believe whatever you want in your soul, but when food and hunger and technology, you know, kind of becomes prominent, you, you might form teams of men and women. If you want to have kids, you form the family household, and usually because men are stronger, they do most of the physical labor. If technology, electricity goes away, they're going to have to. And and then we would have economic or transactional purpose once again between men and women, and they'd be brought together. But right now, no, these forces are here to stay for the foreseeable future, and they're getting stronger. Um, so like you know, if we hang on, let's go back to your. Even if we fix society, I think relationships as we think of them are dead. Traditionally, yes. Technology is mostly invalidated. No, it's invalidated men too. Uh, belief is, is, is naive. Yes. Thanks to feminism, demand for suitable women exceeds supply. Correct. Market has already come up with too many better alternatives. Well, <clears throat> it's, it's not that a lot of women price themselves out of the market. Let's put it that way. A lot of women, and, and a lot, let's just admit, a lot of women are out of the market. Most women, by their behavior, I'm, I'm sure deep down inside, they do want to get married. They say that. I, I believe they believe it. But their actions do. Look, you're if you've come to the point that you got to freeze eggs because you've waited too long, I don't care what you believe in your heart of hearts. Your actions prove. The only thing that matters is your actions. It's too late. You didn't want to have kids. <clears throat> it's another reason when this is published. My little paper essay, it's not his big paper uh, called Analyzing the ROI on the Pursuit of Women. I only focus on 18 to 35. Why? Because if you haven't like gotten married or uh, had your kids by 35, chances are you're not, not serious, no matter what you think or say. Um, it, it's over. Um, so it's not the suitable. I think a lot of women have also effectively left the market. I mean, if we look at their behavior, well, was it the she economy? Uh, they estimate 50% of women in, I guess it's childbearing age, will not be married. All right, 50% of women don't want to have kids or get married. Or maybe they want to have kids. Maybe they want to get Okay, but effectively, they don't want to have a family. And um, I'm not big into predictions or forecasts, but I do believe that one is occurring because I've seen it. I call it the spinster 35 ratio. I measured it, and it was something like, I don't know, 10%. Now, uh, 30% of gals between 18 and 35 are not married. Like, okay, that, that's a tripling of the percentage in 20 years. It's pretty serious. So I do believe that trend will continue. <clears throat> but no, this is this is what happened. And, and you know what? I know you guys are all upset. Love is a very powerful force. Procreation is a very powerful force. I mean, like, look, you'd like to, you know, I got a, I got a seminar on minimalism, how to save money. That, that gets a couple enrollments every month. If I say minimal, minimalism and how to get girls with big tits, now you all sign up for it. Uh, but that, I understand, yeah, you like to get it. You all look at this like the soccer game or the football game. Like, God, I hope our team wins. I mean, yeah, I know why you're invested in it. But 
given the literally trillions of dollars of infrastructure and the at least 50 years, probably 60 now if you consider Fed Minutes starting back in the 60s, 60 years of brainwashing and programming and coding of hundreds of millions of people's minds, not just women, that have gone into like basically obsoleting, if not outright hating and destroying the nuclear family. Uh, you're not going to undo that. And yeah, and I, and I agree with you. It's not like, oh, we're just, you know, it's like the, the, the religious right. We just need Jesus and Ronald Reagan will come back. It's like, no, <laughs> it's just, no, it's not Jesus. Jesus isn't going to make the deficits go away. Jesus isn't going to like unbrainwash another generation of kids not to major in the liberal arts. It's not Jesus. Jesus will save you. All right. <clears throat> Do we have any super chats? It says I got super chats. Miguel Angel can see his 10 bucks. I'm not 6'3, so I've made peace. I'll never be alpha. I'll just accept fingles, accept females using me one swipe right per night at a time. I don't like it. I love it. I'll just stay bachelor insane with my STEM and education and money and success. Yeah, I, in hindsight, I could be wrong. I'm, I'm speculating. It's post game analysis. But yeah, there's there's a lot of gals that seem to really like, and then just whoa, like almost they regret it. Like usually girls would ghost you, and that that would happen too. But then they just be like, eh, I don't know. I'm like, all right. And and after a while, I just like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. Yeah, it's all right. No, I understand. You you just don't feel it. Yeah, I know. That's why you're so torn up about it. Yeah. Oh, I know. We had a grand old time. I took you to the museum and we went riding and I did and now I know I'd have a horrible time too. I I'd want to get rid of a guy like me as well. They just never say you're short. You see, they never say that. They just they just can't get you. Look, you're really great and awesome. It's just you're too short. Oh, all right. Well, I don't control that. Thank you. Have fun with your tall guy that's not as cool as me. Bye. <laughs> I, I do understand though, like for the most part of my dating days, it was, I'd always take it back to a, to my basement dwelling crap apartment. I could see where they'd be like, uh, yeah, you're not making enough money. No, but you see, I'm saving a lot. You don't understand. Uh, Atham, where did this go? Did I miss this? He just sent a super sticker for a buck because he'd do that. He would do that. All right, that's it. Okay, questions, answers, assholeconsulting.com. We'll see you guys later. Tools.